Hi, this is Michelle Mastin with Tablet PC Buzz, and I'm here with a shootout of several of the various inkable devices I have in my collection right now. Before we get to inking on the devices, I wanted to talk about a little problem in the market right now, which is the variety of pens and styluses available that are actually not cross-compatible technology. This one's an Intrigue digital pencil. It has a battery in it. It is not compatible, as far as I know, with the older Intrigue technology, things like the Dell X-T2, or I think some of the HP tablets had Intrigue. I'm not sure if the battery pen is cross-compatible, but I'm pretty sure the battery-less pen does not work in devices that require the battery pen. This one's a capacitive stylus, squishy rubber end. Works on things like the iPad. That's what we'll be using to ink on the iPad later. Squishy rubber end here means it's not going to work so well on resistive screens because it's not strong enough to push them any more than the tip of your finger is. Speaking of resistive screens, this is the one I use with my Arcos. It's resistive. Um, it's an all-in-one pen, which is really fun. This is just a plastic tip stylus, but then it also has an actual ink pen and a mechanical pencil tip in case you like writing on actual paper, which I don't. This is the stylus for my Wacom enabled TC1100. Um, this is an older generation of pen and it does not have an eraser on the end, but it's nice and thick and super comfy to hold and we've got a right click button. Then this one is also a Wacom pen enabled pen, cross compatible on devices like the TC1100. This is actually from a Lenovo X61T and the reason I use this one is because it's got an eraser end. Also, I have a Lenovo X61T, I just, it's heavier, so I didn't bring it over here. I wanted to start with the good old standard of Windows 7 on an active digitizer. And of course, this is not a dual digitizer, this is pen only, so no amount of me poking the screen with my finger is going to do anything at all. I will pull out the pen that is meant to go with this device. We'll get logged in here, and you see I already have uh, OneNote open. This is older hardware, but I do have it running Windows 7. Oh, and synchronization failed. How fun. This is running Windows 7, and this is OneNote 2010. So these are the current softwares that you would get for a good inking experience on pretty much any Windows tablet with an active digitizer right now. And we'll just give it a little quick test. I find that I can write, oh, I can't talk and write at the same time. Let me write. I find that I can write uh, same size as I would be writing on paper. I do tend to spread it out a little more when I'm working on the computer just because we have infinitely scrolling paper. There's no reason to cram your words into one little piece of paper. That's one of the things I love about OneNote. If I write down here, it's going to give me more. If I write at the bottom, it's going to give me more and so on and so forth forever. No limit to the amount of ideas you can fit on a OneNote page. Also, all these notebooks sync through the cloud, so any other machine I have running OneNote is gonna see this page right here. The one drawback to the older pen is no eraser end. That's where one of the newer Wacom pens comes in handy. You'll notice I just wiggled the eraser. I haven't actually made contact with the screen yet. It sees it hovering and I've already sw been switched to the eraser tool. If I give it this end, it'll switch me back to the drawing tool. This end knows that it's an eraser and there it goes. So this is the TC1100, an active digitizer Wacom pen enabled. You'll find this technology in most of the newer convertible tablets and now um, Wacom does offer a dual digitizer that does have the capacitive finger input. I just don't have any device that does that. While we're on the Wacom trend, this here is an interesting little device. This is an Entourage pocket edge. Oh, that's right side up. And it's a dual book. So on this side is an Android 2.2 tablet and on this side is an e-ink screen. And I did want to show you the wake up time on it because it hibernates when you close it, refreshes, initializing, the tablet screen will wake up and the journal's ready to go. This side is actually Wacom Pen Able. This is a resistive touch screen. Not the best experience in the world, but hey, it's Android, it's Froyo, it works. Sort of. You have to push kind of hard because it's resistive. On this side, we have a Wacom pen enabled e ink screen, which means I can pick from any of my Wacom pens. There's also one included, but this is kind of thin and wimpy. I prefer the bigger feel of the Lenovo pen here. And it is e ink, so there's a bit of lag. 
oh, it works better if I select the pen tool. That is one thing is it does not distinguish between pen or eraser ends on this. You do have to select the pen tool to begin writing. But for e-ink, that keeps up pretty well. And then if I do a screen refresh here, it'll clean up the writing even more, uh, making it look really legible. Now, these journal notes don't go anywhere on their own, but someone on the forums has already written an app that will transfer this ink into OneNote, making it selectable as ink and making it convertible to handwriting. In my experience, that has been flawless. OneNote is really good at recognizing my handwriting coming off the edge. It's a very convenient device for having um, because it's Wacom Pen enabled, once again, fingers don't get in the way. Just pen, write, it's e-ink so it looks like paper. And you can actually have reference material open on the Android tablet side, which is quite useful. Um, that, well, except for then it gets chunky. It's a nice little seven inch size, but thick and a little bit heavy, even though it's pretty neat. Um, if you want a smaller experience, but still windows, I have my Arcos 9 here, which is a resistive touch screen. Oh, it takes forever to wake it up. You gotta push the power button and hold it. Okay, it's working on waking up right now. And it's a resistive screen, so I can use my finger or the pen. The problem is it only sees things that push on the screen. It makes no difference whether it's my hand pushing, my finger pushing, my fingernail pushing, the pen pushing, or my palm pushing. But it is kind of, um, it's not the most sensitive touch screen in the world, so I can get away with lightly resting my pinky kind of on the screen like that, and it won't pull, it won't pick that up. So it's not palm rejection, but you can get away with a little bit of touching the screen with something other than the pen. The advantage is it's running OneNote. So once again, everything I write in OneNote syncs from one to the other. I do end up working in portrait mode a lot on this one, uh, just because it's easier to get your hand on the bezel. You can't, I've tried it, sorry, this is landscape mode. I've tried it in portrait mode and I just cannot get my hand off the screen well enough for it to work. So a little resistive screen like this, this is a nine inch screen. It's a pretty thin device with decent battery life. It's nice when you want to have one note with you, but you don't need to do anything particularly um, intensive on it. It's a slow machine. It takes it a while to wake up. Um, I had to have it prepped open with OneNote. It takes it several minutes to boot up, get OneNote open, stop thrashing the hard drive so you can actually do some writing. But if you prep it ahead of time and just put it to sleep, uh, it's not so bad. And it is nice to have OneNote in a lighter package, although the HP Slate now offers a great alternative to having OneNote with an active entry digitizer in um, an 8.9 inch lightweight form factor. My camera's yelling at me for battery life, so we'll get on to part two in another video. Thanks, bye. Hi, this is Michelle Maston with Tablet PC Buzz, back with part two of my Inkable Things shootout. Uh, now we're gonna take a look at some of the newcomers on the market, the non-Windows tablets that are also promising the potential of a good ink note-taking experience. Now, I have the original iPad, so this isn't the most shiny and new version of it. There is now Generation 2 hardware available, but the software for note-taking is pretty similar. You'll see I've already got my penultimate uh, notebook open here, and this one's going to require the capacitive stylus. Now, there is no hardware palm rejection available in this. It's a capacitive screen. Anything that's capacitive, it sees. Um, all of this is gonna be done with software. Kudos to Penultimate for a really good software solution on allowing me to plop my hand down and write. And you'll see it's pretty good about rejecting where my palm was, but we do get some stray ink marks in there. I have to write a little bigger than normal because the capacitive stylus has the soft rubber squishy end on it. It has to be big enough for the screen 
to detect it. Um, another frustration I've run into when using penultimate, I'm not sure if it'll do it here on camera, because of course things never happen on camera. It's just like having the repairman in place. Now oh, that should say Fox. Oh, it's giving me a lot of stray marks now. Um, one thing I noticed when trying to take extensive notes on this one is that it would, it would occasionally decide that the first word I had written on a new line was my palm. And on many occasions, it just removed ink right after I had put it down, which I found to be incredibly frustrating. I'd have to try several times to write that first word on a line to get it to stick. Although here, it looks like it had no problem with that. But you can see, even as I was going, just very few stray ink marks. A really, really good job uh, in the software for blanking out my palm and letting me just plop my hand down on the screen and write pretty normally. It's close to how I would write on paper, just a little bit bigger. Um, but a pretty good alternative if you don't mind carrying something this big. It was kind of hard to hold in one hand while I was doing the writing. A fun new alternative that has just come out is the HTC Flyer with its magic pen. This is an N-Trig battery pencil, but it has uh, two buttons on it. Normally these pens, for example, with the Fujitsu T580 or the HP Slate, will have just one button that's a right click. On Android, you don't need to right click. This is running Gingerbread 2.3 with hopefully a honeycomb update in the future. Um, you don't need to right click, so the bottom button here will give you a highlight, and the top button is an eraser, which is huge. Um, these are not eraser ends, because there's a battery in there, but having a button to erase is really, really nice, rather than having to find the eraser tool, tap it, do your erase, and go back and tap on the pen tool before you can write again. Um, another nice thing about the Flyer's home screen is it gives you uh, several apps here that you can just shortcut into. Dragging it into the circle will take me straight into the Notes app. For some reason it likes to give me the keyboard first, but I just tap on the pen thing with the pen tool. There's a little button here that taps, only sees the pen. Um, and once we're in here, it's just going to look at the pen to do ink. If I put my finger down, it's going to scroll the page. If I put the pen down, it's going to give me ink. And you can see this is really little writing. I can write very, very small and accurately enough. This is still readable, believe it or not. I can actually read my own handwriting. I hope you can read that. Um, I, can, I found that I can write really, really small on this, um, very similar to how I would write on paper. In fact, that's probably exactly the same size that I would write on paper. Um, this is the smallest or narrowest of the pen tools, but it works very well for me and I can fit a ton of writing on just one page. And the nice thing is this is also an infinitely scrolling page. You don't have to flip from page to page, but you can just scroll down. It gives you more paper, more paper, more paper. And now my writing's all the way back up here. Um, you've got several pen tools to choose from, although I'm not much of an artist. I only play with the paintbrush. I'm really just here with my pen writing words on paper. And this is an excellent device for it. You notice there was no palm didn't get in the way. Uh, occasionally I'll bump one of the capacitive buttons. That's the only thing is it does not disable the capacitive buttons when the pen is in range. I can lay my hand on the page all I want. It won't get in the way, but if I brush one of these buttons with my hand while I'm writing, I will be saving the document and exiting out. I'll be back at the home screen. I'll be backing out of things. I'll have a menu open before I know it. Just all kinds of craziness. So the only thing with this one is you do have to avoid bumping the capacitive buttons as you write. But um, the Notes app here integrates really, really nicely with Evernote. Even though uh, it doesn't come over as ink that I can put into OneNote, these notes sync over to Evernote as screenshots, but I can still search through the ink in them. It will recognize um, ink that I've written. I, ca I can search, type in my search thing, and it will highlight in the ink in Evernote. I'll attach a screenshot of that. Um, to the news article at Tablet PC Buzz. You may have already seen that screenshot in the forums, but one big advantage of this uh, is just the Evernote syncing. I'm a big fan of keeping my notes synchronized from machine to machine, which is another one of the drawbacks from the iPad. Penultimate is a great app. The inking is really smooth and the palm rejection is very well done, but then your notes are stuck in Penultimate. You can email them out as a PDF. 
but then you've got a PDF without searchable ink. Um, on any of the Windows machines with OneNote, you're going to get searchable ink, including importing from the Edge into OneNote. That's going to give you searchable ink. The HTC Flyer syncing into Evernote will give you searchable ink. Um, so that is a demonstration of all my various inkable things and all the various pens required to make that happen. Thanks for watching. Bye.